If there had been a best-seller book list in France during the late 14th century, then The Romance of the Rose would have registered as the number one best-seller for years, with translations from the original French into English, Dutch and Italian. The poem set out to entertain the reader as the hero tries to woo his beloved. The Romance of the Rose was widely read, it became hugely popular and was highly regarded by laymen and scholar alike. In 1401, a scholar at the French court wrote a treatise supporting the poem. Soon after, he received a letter from a little-known poet. The letter began, Most precious lord and scholar, sage in conduct, lover of knowledge, soundly erudite, well versed in rhetoric. With all due respect, you are entirely in error and without justification in giving such accomplished praise to the aforesaid work, which were better called utter frivolity than any profitable book, in my opinion. The letter went on to say that the poem justified rape, that it deliberately slandered all women, and asked if the secretary himself would allow his daughters to be educated by it. The letter was signed by Christine de Pizan. By daring to question the representation of women in literature and by extension women's place in society, Christine de Pizan was rocketed into public view and for some Christine's letter, penned over 600 years ago, marks the birth of feminism. Christine de Pizzano was born about 1364 in Italy. Her mother was the daughter of a councillor. Her father was a professor at the University of Bologna. He was appointed to the court of Charles V in France and the family moved to Paris. In Paris, their surname mutated from Pizzano to Pizan. Early on, despite the fact that most women were never educated, her father was adamant that Christine would receive an education. When she was 15, Christine married Étienne de Castel, a scholar and nobleman. The couple were still newlyweds when, in 1380, King Charles V died. Charles VI was a child when he became king, and his uncle, Philip of Burgundy, advised him. Philip also proceeded to drain the royal coffers. Christine's father continued to work with the new king, but his income was vastly decreased. He died around 1385. Étienne, Christine's husband, became head of the family. But five years later, in 1390, Etienne died while away on business with the king. Christine was 25 years old, with three young children and a mother to support. She had no money and no prospects. She tried to get access to her husband's money, but was denied as she was a woman. Facing destitution, Christine began writing. She wrote poetry to the memory of her husband, and her work was well received by French and English aristocrats. At least now she could look after her family. And then Christine read the treatise praising the poem The Romance of the Rose. Her world was about to change forever. The Romance of the Rose is a very long poem, but the following short quotation sums up the attitude towards women at the time. All women are, will be and have been whores by action or intention. Christine's argument was against the generalization in the poem. The poem defamed an entire sex without exception. She also pointed out an inconsistency in the writing. While the poet accuses all women of immorality, in fact, the actions of most women contradicts that. Thus began The Quarrel of the Rose, a literary debate that marked a turning point in literature and history. In the debate, Christine exchanged heated arguments with intellectuals over the nature of the poem and gained alibis and enemies along the way. The Quarrel of the Rose lasted for years and culminated in the accusation of blasphemy, not against the poem, oddly enough, but against Christine's effort to assess it. Christine continued the debate in her next book, the Book of the City of Ladies. 
In it, she creates a symbolic city where women are defended and appreciated, and the book became a forum to speak on issues of consequence to women. Interestingly, as a literary construct, Christine's utopian city anticipated Thomas More's utopia by over a hundred years and Francis Bacon's New Atlantis by over 200. After being thrust into the medieval public eye following the Quarrel of the Rose, Christine wrote prolifically. In a six-year period, she wrote at least 15 major manuscripts, not including minor essays and poems. She was commissioned by Philip of Burgundy to write the official biography of his deceased brother, King Charles V. In 1418, Christine left Paris and joined her daughter at a convent and stopped writing. The notable exception was a single poem in 1429 that celebrated the success of Joan of Arc. Christine died in obscurity around 1430. Christine de Pizan was outspoken in her views, passionate about the defence of France and of women, and she wrote prolifically for 20 years while at the French court. Why did she effectively stop writing when she went to the convent in 1418? Christine lived in a Europe emerging from the Dark Ages, at the end of the Crusades, a Europe still suffering the ravages of the Black Death, at a time when war had rules known as chivalry. The dominant opinion on women was that they were inferior, Women were deceitful and sexually voracious. Women were judged by gender, not by ability or personality. These ideas were perpetuated in so-called scholarly books written by men. For her part, Christine wanted to redress that balance. Not all women were evil. She wanted to write about the reality of what she saw, and the vanguard of her attack was literature. Broadly at the time, literature centred on the system of courtly love, where the married noblewoman is dominant over her lover, the knight. But this system, this construct, emerged after the First Crusade in 1099 and did not represent real society. Equally, literature was written by men, and principally they came from a very small but vocal minority, the church and the aristocracy. Both classes were socially restricted. They rarely, if ever, met women who lived in broader society. So not only were women not representing themselves, they were being misrepresented. So in her lifetime, Christine de Pizan wrote from a woman's perspective about issues pertaining to women. Again and again, she challenged a society that did not educate its women. She exonerated women from the accusation that they somehow invite rape and highlighted domestic violence at a time when canon law specifically allowed wife beating. She wrote about the ill-mannered young princes of France. She wrote about war, about politics and the church. She indicted both popes in the Great Western Schism and suggested that the church was susceptible to corruption. She sided with secular monarchy over the church. In short, she challenged the male-dominated society of medieval France. But in doing so, Christine de Pizan was rapidly gaining very powerful enemies. Having been at the royal court in Paris for years, Christine left in 1418. Although she died almost 12 years later, it seems that she only wrote one poem in that time. Some commentators believe that in fact Christine was forcibly silenced. Others believe she wrote as prolifically as before, but that her work was destroyed. But we will never know why, having written so eloquently for 20 years, Christine de Pizan became silent. Christine de Pizan was one of the very, very few women writers of the period, 
She was the first writer, male or female, to oversee the layout and illustration of her manuscripts. She was probably the first writer, male or female, to write a commissioned biography and is recognised as the first professional author in France and possibly in Europe. She was one of the first writers to be published in print when that medium began to blossom at the end of the 15th century. Luckily, manuscripts of her work were picked up by William Caxton in England and books were printed, albeit years after her death. Christine de Pizan's writing has reached us, the modern audience. One study contests that William Shakespeare based some of his female characters on Christine. Another study links her work very directly with the poetry of John Keats. Through her writing, Christine challenged male domination in society and years of accepted stereotypes in literature and arts. She provided logical, provocative challenges to the social restrictions on women. Page by page, using intellect and insight, Christine de Pizan began to erase the vast middle ground between the sexes, and in truth, her influence on literature and society can never be measured. Amazing Graces is an original documentary series about the forgotten women of history. Research assistant for this programme was Paul Daly. The series is conceived and produced by Breege Brennan.